Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'll be drawing some expressions with you. Uh, and it's a bit of time lapse, obviously. And uh, so I'm going to start off with fear. And so the main thing with this is just showing that wide open expression, the eyebrows back, and a little bit of white to the top and bottom of the iris always helps. And then you just change different orientations uh, of the tilt of the head and uh, that's really it. So I'm using uh, an HB lead and a 0.5 mechanical pencil just to uh, draw through this and I'm working off Bristol board smooth. I'm actually using Blue Line Pro. Uh, I usually use Strathmore 300 but in this, today I'm actually using Blue Line because I can't find my Strathmore and I got all this Blue Line I gotta use anyways. It's, it's great stuff. They're both great. Um, so you know, back to the expression, it's just really playing around with these different variables. And then, uh, obviously, I'm just doing one eye, and then I'm going to the next expression just to make this move a little bit quicker. And then, by the end of it, we're going to draw three characters uh, utilizing each expression. So, I find it to be, or I found this to be a good exercise, and hopefully it is for you as well. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. So now for anger. You know, we, we draw that a lot for comics, right? Lots of angry people in comics. Lots of angry people in general. But it's just a downward tilt to the brow. Uh, I bring the um, the iris and the pupil up to uh, the top eyelid, even though I don't generally show the top eyelid. So for me, the way that I'm drawing it, and I'm not saying this is the way it's always got to be, but it's what I see when I do it, is when I lower that brow and maybe tilt the character's head forward a little bit and they're looking up under their brow a bit, to me it kind of... Uh, makes sense to hide that top eyelid under the the fold of the brow uh, the skin of the brow so that's what you see me doing there and then past that it's you know a lot of tight compressed wrinkles to the middle of the head uh, and against the nose uh, and then wrinkles along the side and you can just really go crazy with that and add as much as you want or as little uh, so with this one uh, this is going to be sad or unenthused or somber or I don't know just just basically sad uh, maybe sleepy. <laughs> kind of looks sleepy at this point. Uh, so with that, the eyebrow being tilted the other way, obviously. And then I, I did still go with the the iris and the pupil being covered by the top eyelid. But the difference is I show more of that top uh, eyelid in full view. I feel like that helps it. And then obviously the angling of the skin against that gives it that sad and kind of I'm depressed and blah, you know, feel blah, I've had my coffee, whatever. And so that gives you a starting point. And from here, I just want, wanted to kind of try it out now and say, okay, if I've made three characters uh, that each express this, you know, what would they look like? And uh, yeah, I thought it was actually a fun little exercise. Um, and I think all in all, it took about an hour and a half, an hour, maybe an hour. I don't know. I did it late last night. I went to bed, but um, just in case you needed that bit of information, I guess. Um, so here, just drawing like a, a, a woman uh, in distress, you know, eyes roll wide open, uh, the jaw dropping down, so I had to extend the lower uh, jaw line. Uh, but I'm constantly maneuvering that. In fact, I think I change it because with the, the mouth opening, another thing that, that is resembling of fear is that kind of, you know, our mouths drop open in, in disbelief, right? So you have to pivot that from, you know, beneath the ear. And so you have to lower that jawline to showcase that. Uh, so I oftentimes have to do that at least twice before I, I get it right. Uh, so I'm constantly like moving facial features around. And, and that's why I think it's good to, to really talk about like, say, when I teach the Andrew Loomis method on the channel and in my, in my course content online and all that, it, it's it's there to get you started and to get you going with drawing faces, but then you got to remember that faces are pretty malleable. You know, just think of like Jim Carrey and his expressions, right? So you gotta you're gonna stretch these things. You're gonna move things around. Yes, there is a base skeletal, you know, the cranium that doesn't, you know, has only certain ranges of movement, and then it's very uh, stiff, right? It's, it's bone, but but at the same time, our skin and our fat deposits and our wrinkles and our voluptuous lips not mine hers you know all that mo maneuvers around so so there you see i'm changing i'm like oh, i wanted to raise the nose up the nose felt too uh elongated 
uh, and therefore I got to move everything else. So I just don't want you to be too rigid in your approach when you design characters. That's all I'm really getting at. You know, yes, there is structure and there's uh, bone and a difference between bone and fat and flesh and all that. But um, but really, when you're designing your characters, try to think organically, fluidly, and allow yourself to really I don't know, just just experiment and do lots of different things. So you can come up with you know all sorts of cool characters. Uh, it's very easy to get caught up in doing the same characters. I, I I do that all the time. You probably see it on the channel. I have like a a core set of characters that I go to, and I have to experiment and try to break that monotony. So with this guy, just a typical mean mug, squared off jaw, a little more masculine and rigid. Uh, so uh, as I say a lot, like I I explain a lot of things with. Uh, you know, if I'm trying to convey uh, a feminine quality, it's going to be more organic lines, more curves. If I'm going for somebody that's tough, maybe mean even, uh, masculine, I'm going for rigid and angular lines. Uh, and that's, that's just a really easy way to use shape language and line language, I guess, to convey these different feelings and emotions. And you got to think, things that are um, angular denote... Um, uh, danger, right? So triangles and pyramids are scarier than circles. <laughs> it sounds weird, but it, it's the truth. Like it, if you want to make something look more fearsome, give it lots of angles. Just think like uh, sharp teeth, right? It's uh, it's probably the easiest way to explain it is that you know things that are sharp are more angular. So we're we're trained to believe that uh, that is more dangerous. But back to the anchor, it's the downward tilt of the eyebrows, the squinting of the eyes, pressing the pupil and the iris up against that top eyelid, uh, downward tilted nose, and even that grimace is very angular uh, and, and obviously trying to do a squared off jawline. I'll, I'll admit that I had some real issues with um, asymmetrical value here with this character. It's a little too skewed, even his hair ends up being kind of weirdly skewed. Um, I was okay with that because, well, at first, I'm kind of saying that I'm seeing flaws in it now, but uh, I was okay with that because basically you do want some asymmetrical value to your characters. If not, you know, they can get very stiff. Like our previous video we did, we used the symmetry tool to draw Wolverine, right? And, and that's cool, but you have to actually go back and try to break that symmetry a bit. And I think that's very important when you're talking expressions. An eyebrow should be a little bit higher. One eye could be a little bit off. It doesn't. It shouldn't be too far off, you know, because uh, then it just looks like you're making a mistake. But at the same time, we aren't entirely symmetrical. And expressions, you should definitely play around with asymmetrical value. Uh, you definitely don't want symmetry in things like hair and, and things like that. But um, So again, just play around with it. Uh, it is a bit of a balancing act. You don't want too much asymmetrical uh, work, you know, and if you if you find yourself doing that too much, just use grids, you know, draw some grids on the paper. Even if the character's angled, I find that grids help immensely with getting uh, a sense of, of balance uh, in the character's uh, features. Uh, so with this guy, a bit of sadness, or I think he really just came out to, to look more unenthused and unimpressed. And, you know, keep in mind with these expressions, this is where you really take these uh, variations and you mix them together. One eyebrow raised, one side of the mouth raised, uh, or a, a bit of sad looking eyes with a smile. Like you mix it up, uh, like Joker, you know, think about that character. He's really like this crazy smile with these me mean and psychotic eyes a lot of times. So you have to mix them up. Uh, but this guy, you know, the sad look, the downward tilted eyes, the big top eyelids, uh, the downward turned mouth, obviously, uh, all that kind of, you know, the, the downward turned eyebrows, all that uh, helps explain a bit of sadness. Uh, pushing the pupil and the irises up against that top eyelid so that, you know, they, he looks sleepy, right? And, and all that kind of gives that unenthused lack of zeal and excitement to the face. And then the rest of it is just character development. So I was thinking somebody almost like Alfred from uh, Batman. I think he, Alfred has more hair though, doesn't he? But you know, a similar long slender face and, and that kind of thing. Um, and that's really it. So, you know, it's it, it's pretty uh, simple set of 
ideas that really go into it. I mean, you can definitely get into the minutia of it and explain every little aspect, you know, and that's what I do those longer courses for. I'll make sure to link in the description box below if you want to know more information on that. But basically, it is a very simple set of ideas and principles. Just think of like, um, you know, the very basic smiley faces and, and sad faces that you see with emojis, right? You understand what all that means in a very simple state. Uh, but it's then utilizing that properly inside your more advanced drawings, and that's what gives you, you know, your character design. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. More on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.